we bless you on this first Sunday of 2022. We come to say thank you on this first Sunday of 2022. We come to acknowledge your goodness. If he was good all during 2021, if he preserved you throughout the pandemic, if he kept you when you didn't want to be kept, I need you to bless him from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. I need you to ignite this atmosphere. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and we are safe. The devil didn't want you to make it to 2022, but your presence is a praise all by itself. I need every survivor to lift up your voice. I need every thriver to lift up your voice. You are proof that no weapon formed against you will be able to prosper. You are proof that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Lean over and tell somebody I'm proof. I'm proof that he made a way out of no way. I'm proof that he'll open up doors that no man can close. I am proof. God, we bless you. God, we extol you. God, we lift you up. God, we reverence you. God said you're coming out of this year the way you go into it. If you go in with the praise, you're coming out with the praise. If you go in with joy, you're coming out with joy. Weeping may endure for a night, but I decree and declare on this first Sunday of 2022, I'm going to have more joy than I've ever had. I'm going to have more peace than I've ever had. I'm going to make more money than I've ever made. I'm going to make a bigger impact than I've ever had. God, we bless you. God, we lift you up. Don't let the mask muzzle your praise. Don't let the mask muzzle your praise. I need you to release a sound. No spectators allowed. I need some instigators. I need some agitators. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all, and all that is within me. Bless his holy, oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Send a praise that'll meet you in February. Release a sound that will meet you in March. Send a praise that will reach in April. Send a praise, send Judah first. Before you walk into any room, let your praise go before you. Before you walk into any situation, let your praise go before you. God says, I dwell in the midst of praise. Hallelujah. 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 My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Here's my part. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Look down your row and say, magnify the Lord with me. Help me make him bigger than my problems. Help me make him bigger than my situation. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. God, we're not taking another step. We're not going any further until we bless you. We're not going any further until we acknowledge how far you brought us. Father, this, this first Sunday, we come to acknowledge you on this first Sunday. There's no other place that we could be than in your presence. Your presence is better than life. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. God, you've been our sustainer. God, you've been our keeper. God, you've been our friend. God, when we wanted to feel suicidal and throw in the towel, you threw it back at us and said, live and not die. God, I decree we will live to declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. God, every moment we get, we don't take it lightly. We don't take it for granted. But God, we will lift up your name on high. I decree for every believer that this will be the greatest year of your life. I decree that spiritually this will be the best year of your life. You're going to pray like you've never prayed before. You're going to seek his face like never before. You're going to experience God like never before. Somebody shout, this is my year. 
You didn't say it loud enough. I need you to make hell nervous. Say, this is my year. Look behind you and tell somebody, this is my year. With an attitude, this is my year. This is my year. Welcome to the Rock Church. I am so grateful. I'm overwhelmed with joy and excitement. Look around you and tell somebody good morning. Say welcome. Uh, type in the chat where you're right. Where are you watching from? I am excited about 2022 at the Rock Church. We said this is the year we're going to the next level. Somebody shout, I'm going to the next level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next level. It means I'm going to go progressively past where I went the last time. Yeah, it's not about perfection, it's about progression. Yeah, sometimes you quit because you set the bar too high. All I'm telling you to do with this year is take the next step. Yeah, take, take, the, take the next step in your finances. Take the next step in your prayer. Take the next step in your relationships. Somebody shout, next level! Next level. Give God praise for you being here today. I am super super excited. There's a word from the Lord today, uh, but I said on the first Sunday, you see I wore a suit. I wore a black suit. Whenever I wear this black suit, it, either somebody died, amen, or somebody getting sat down, or it's communion. Today, it's communion in Jesus' name. Uh, I am super excited. I said on the first Sunday of 2022, I want us to observe communion. Uh, Lady Nakia, she hasn't been feeling well, but she's coming out on the other side in Jesus' name. I am so grateful. Uh, I, I went and got her communion yesterday. And, and communion, there are two elements for it, of course. Uh, it's also called Eucharist. It's also called the Lord's Supper, a uh, holy communion. What it does is it links every spirit-filled believer all around the world. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in, watch me, in remembrance of me. Yeah, you, you missed it. Uh, you're looking at remembrance from the, the, the first definition, which is to think of. He's saying, whenever you do this, I want you to think about how much I love you. I want you to think about the price that I paid. I want you to think about the fact that my love wasn't just, just words, but my word was action. Watch me, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I want you to do it in remembrance of me, but I want you to look at the etymology of the word remember. Remember to bring things back together again. Do you realize that communion will put you back together again? Yeah. Is there anybody who felt like your life was left in pieces after 2020 and 2021? God says when you take this communion, it's gonna put you back together again. Catch me, two elements for communion are unleavened bread. Everybody say unleavened bread. Unleavened. The Bible says just a little bit of leaven, leaven at the whole lump. Anybody ever get caught up off a of little stuff? Yeah, just a little bit of yeast will cause the whole loaf to rise. Yeah, anybody ever been having a good time and somebody, uh, a good day, and somebody came at you wrong and just something small took you from zero to 60? Uh, lean over and tell your neighbor, he talking to you, not me. Go ahead and tell him real quick. Yeah, you was just speaking in tongues, and then somebody, they messed with you, and you spoke in another tongue. Come on, come on, talk to me. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lean over and tell your neighbor, don't push me. I'm close to the edge. Go ahead and tell him. I'm trying not to lose my head. Yeah, it's like a jungle sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I'm telling you is communion, it, it puts me back together again. It brings healing. And here's, here's where I get excited. When I take the fruit of the vine, it's like I'm having a blood transfusion. Hear me, hear me. It's not just grape juice. It's not just wine. When you take it, I'm believing for the same power that's in the blood of Jesus to flow throughout my veins. It's a blood transfusion. Do you know what a blood transfusion is? It means if you're sick and you're laying next to someone who's well, as their blood gets transfused into your body, their healing gets into your body. Their wholeness gets into your body. Their completion. I'm telling you, when Jesus Christ died on Calvary's cross, he shed his blood. The life of the body is in the blood. You need a blood transfusion. Do you realize it takes 23 seconds for the blood to circulate from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet? What that lets me know is that at any moment, I'm 23 seconds away from a breakthrough. I'm 23 seconds away from a miracle. I need you to type it in the chat. Tell somebody 23 seconds. Yeah, I'm 23 seconds from thinking differently. I'm 23 seconds from perceiving differently. I'm 23 seconds from feeling renewed. I'm 23 seconds from getting my strength back. Now you're only seven seconds away. I'm, I'm, I'm 23 seconds from getting my mind back. I'm getting my joy back, my equilibrium back. You four seconds away at this juncture. I, I, the blood, with the blood, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. 
Pastor, why are we doing communion on the first Sunday? Because I need to plead the blood over your mind. Yeah, there's some thoughts that need to pass over. There's some negative perceptions that need to pass over. There's some of you all who are feeling like, I ain't been to church in a minute, but I'm coming today, and you got a spirit of condemnation. The devil is a liar. Yeah, this ain't the church that beats you up. This is the church that gets you up. This is the church that say, get back in the game. You got a lot to accomplish. I don't care what happened last year. Lean over and tell somebody, today's a new day. And this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Your problem is you're thinking about March. March ain't even here yet. You keep having good days, you're going to end up having good weeks. Y'all missed it. You keep having good weeks, you're going to turn it into good months. You keep having good months, you're going to say, this is the best year of my I want you to pull out your communion. We're going to take it together. I want to pray, and then we're going to take communion together all at the same time. I want to applaud our on-site staff. I want to applaud people online for uh, purchasing communion. If you don't have nothing by now and you're watching online, uh, I don't know what to tell you. Amen. If you got a donut, <laughs> smash it. Amen. If you got orange juice, put food coloring in it. Amen. Uh, at this point, amen. <laughs> kind of out there. Uh, uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the body. We thank you for this body that was broken for us. Your word says you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon you and with your stripes. We are healed. God, when we take this body, when we take this unleavened bread, I literally declare that it will bring healing to us. It will bring healing in secret spaces and places that hurt that we don't tell anyone else about. It will produce healing in our lives. God, I pray, Lord, that you would transform this grape juice into the blood of Jesus. God, I pray literally that we will feel the power, the wonder-working power in the blood of Jesus. God, I thank you, Lord, that your blood is not exclusive, but it's inclusive. It reaches the highest mountain, and it flows to the lowest valley. Lord, we thank you for this blood that gives us strength from day to day. We declare it will never lose its power. God, keep us spiritually, Lord. We recognize that life is fleeting. So many deaths are occurring. It reminds us that life is but a vapor. This year, let us maximize the moment. This year, nothing's more important than our relationship with you. This year, God, we put you back where you belong. God, it's not a phase. This is our life. God, it's no longer what we do, but it's, it's become who we are. God, I pray, Lord, that we'll draw closer to you this year like never before. In Jesus' name. Let me read the scripture. We'll take it together. It says, For I have received from the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup of the New Testament of my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 26. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Everybody take the bread. Everybody drink of the cup. And I need you to give God a sound that says, God, I thank you for your body. I thank you for your blood. God, let this communion link us with one another and let us link us to heaven. In Jesus' name, give God the best praise you've given all morning long. Listen, God has done some incredible things for and through our church. When I look back over 2021, literally there's a part of me that feels like a uh, biggie. It was all a dream. Like what happened last year, some churches don't accomplish what you all accomplished in their whole tenure in 12 months. You know what? Y'all y'all don't believe me. A picture is worth a thousand words. Have a seat. Let's see what God did throughout 2021. 2021 is the year to realign, to readjust, and to reimagine. Let's jump into it. Y'all mind riding with me for a second? We started off the year coming in hot. 
we did a series entitled Back to the Future, going back to biblical doctrine for future direction. We made Matthew 25 come alive by reaching out to those who are often overlooked and marginalized. We blessed our community with $5,000 in gas. We figured, you know what? Like, if we're going to give away gas, why not give away a car? Well, I wanted to tell you, we found the parts to your car, but we put them in this new car. It's impossible to have the year of the re without having a revival. Pastor Welton Smith, Prophetess Barbara Calloway, Pastor YPJ Miller, and week four was big. We had Pastor Mike McClure Jr. The men celebrated the women for Mother's Day. The women celebrated the men for Father's Day. We went to summer school to relearn Christ. We got to bring the word for the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World National Convention. We got to be a part of a conversation with two of the greatest preachers of all time, Bishop T.D. Jakes and Bishop Noel Jones. In the fall, we birthed a hybrid model of the Rock Church with on-site and online worship experiences. People from all over the country descended on the Bay Area. Souls were baptized. Oh yeah. And we did another one. We gave away $5,000 in gas again. We got to go to Dallas Fort Worth and bring the word for the Chosen Vessel Cathedral, pastor by the living legend himself, Bishop Marvin Sapp. We literally became the Rock Church Bay Area. Like for real, we used our recalculating series to have pop up worship experiences all over the Bay Area. We were blessed to be able to help rebuild a school in Columbia that was ravished by the hurricane. Our reignite series was lit, like, like not figuratively, literally lit, like fire in the building. We sponsored Thanksgiving for the Covenant House and we're able to bless over a hundred young people with Thanksgiving dinners, not to mention families in our community. We baptized more souls. Will reap a bountiful harvest in their lives. God, we thank you right now. Still can't now. believe it. Our covering Dr. R.A. and Dr. Victory Vernon invited us to speak at the Word Church in Cleveland, Ohio. We ended the year on a high. We reimagined a new in-person location, sponsored the Covenant House youth and young adults for Christmas, adopted a family of eight to bless in Michigan. 2021 was our year of the re. 2022, get ready. We going to the next level. Tell somebody we going to another level this year. Stand to your feet, stand to your feet right now. We're going to another level. Luke chapter five, verse 10 from the New Living Translation. His partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, were also amazed. Look down your row and tell them, you my partners today. Go ahead and tell them. Uh, his partners were, were, were also amazed. I'm telling you that you're going to be amazed at what God's about to do in your partners. His partners were also amazed. Jesus replied to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Uh, thank you, Sierra, for our title today. I want to speak to you from the subject, Level Up. Uh, lean over and tell somebody, level up. Uh, you may be seated in God's house. Motivational speaker, uh, author Zig Ziglar says, and I quote, he says, you don't have to be great to start, but you do got to start to be great. Yeah, I want to commend you that on this first Sunday of 2022, you said I could make up a ton of excuses on why I don't need to be here. 
but you said, no, 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 no. I had too many random years to start this year without being intentional. You said, God, you're not just the addendum, but you're the subject this morning. Uh, you said, God, I'm coming to the house of the Lord. On this first Sunday of 2022, I want to commend you for starting the year with intentionality because this is a year where we step into everything that God crafted, called, and created us to be. This is the year. According to the Urban Dictionary, level up means to make a move in your life for the better. You missed it. If a choice got you in it, have you ever considered that a choice can get you out of it? Uh, 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 notice that 2022, it's our year to go to the next level. Our journey will not be abstract. It will not be arbitrary, but it will be deliberate and intentional. We're striving this year for progress over perfection. Yes. Yeah, yeah, maybe you set the bar too high last year. Yeah, maybe last year you said you was going to work out seven days a week. Lean over and tell somebody you ain't worked out seven days last year. Amen. <laughs> Uh, so, so, so maybe, maybe you start off slow so you can get some small wins under your belt and you can build up and accumulate success. Notice in our text, in eight verses, Peter goes from one level to another. In eight verses, we watch Peter go from one dimension to the next dimension. In eight verses, he goes from his occupation to his vocation. Occupation, what you work for. Vocation, what you're called to do. In eight verses, he goes from, don't shout, empty to overflow. I'm trying to tell you that if you get the principles from Peter, this can be your year of rapid acceleration. I just lost the whole house. This can be your year, watch me, of quantum leaps. What took other people years might take you months. What took other people months might take you weeks. Is there anybody who believes that God can press fast forward in your life? Is there anybody who believes you can have rapid acceleration? Anybody believe that you can go zero to 60 faster than the person next to you? I'm trying to tell you, somebody shout, it's my year. It's my year to level up. There are some principles that you got to extract from this text that will give you game for 2022. Give me all of your attention for the next 20 minutes. I promise you it'll change the next 12 months of your life. Your attention impacts your retention. Yeah, sometimes you think you're multitasking. You're not multitasking. You're multi-failing. Uh, lean over and tell somebody, concentrate. Stay focused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 90% like of us have low-key ADHD. So, so I need you to stay focused. Here it is. The first thing you need for 2022 is you need to get your priorities right. The text says he noticed two empty boats at water's edge. For the fishermen had left them and they were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, you missed your shout. It was two boats, but he stepped into my boat. You missed what I just said. See, some of you all, you, you, you praise God for cars and houses, but me, I just, I just thank him for stepping in my boat. Yeah. Uh, 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 my grandmother used to sing a song that says, while everybody else is calling, just don't pass me by. My, my prayer this year is, God, I don't care about everybody else's boat. Just step in my boat. Yeah, yeah, lean over and tell your neighbor, no shade, but, but he's stepping in my boat today. Yeah, yeah, he, he stepped into one of the boats. Jesus asked Simon, its owner, push it out into the water, so he sat in the boat and he taught the crowds from there. Yeah. See, y'all cheat. Y'all cheat. Y'all went to Sunday school, yeah. so you know the end of the story. <laughs> but what I need you to understand is Peter is experiencing the story in real time. Yeah. So Jesus pulls up and steps in his boat. Right. Peter doesn't say, you all right? <laughs> I own the boat. Peter doesn't say, Peter doesn't say, uh, 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 it's not on my schedule to allow you to have this boat in this moment. What Peter does is he allows him to step into his boat and he makes a deliberate decision to make Jesus a priority. He says in this moment, it ain't about me. It's not about my boat. It's not about what I have plans to do. When Jesus interrupts my schedule, he becomes my schedule. It's all about you. Time is the most valuable thing you possess how can you spend it so frivolously? Oh, come here, come here, come here. In two weeks, at least six to eight people I'm close to die. Time is so frivolous. How Time is so valuable. How can you spend it so frivolously? 
I'm telling you, you have to have your priorities straight. Yeah, unequivocally, if somebody pulls up to you and says, what are your priorities? You need to be able to run them down yes. emphatically without yes. hesitation. What are your priorities, pastor? Number one priority for me is God. Yes. Period. Lean over and tell somebody, period. period. God, period. After God comes my wife. Yes. I didn't say the rock church. Yes. Uh -huh. After God comes my wife. My, yes. wife. my wife tried to make me cry last night. She sat next to me on the couch and said, the way you took care of me when I was sick. She said, it gives me confidence that I can grow old with you and I'm going to be taken care of for the rest of my life. I had to let her know why she's sick. You're a priority. Yeah, 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 your pastor was doing three meals a day and snacks. Y'all missed this. She got roses twice while she was sick. Part of me thinks she was well by Wednesday, but I think she milked it for the past four days. Y'all not going to help me. After God comes my wife. Watch this. Then my children. I just lost everybody. I just lost everybody. I'm trying to help people who are letting your children come between you and your spouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your children 13 and they still sleeping in the bed with you. Lean over and tell somebody the devil is a liar. Yeah, when, when our kids turned six months, we was like, that's it. Let them cry it out. Let them cry it out. <laughs> but they're crying. If, if they stay here, I'm going to be crying in Jesus' name. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is I can't afford, and watch this, and my children know they come after my wife. The whole house knows where they rank. After my children comes my church. After my church comes my health. Watch this, because if I'm not good physically, I'm not going to be good spiritually. After my health comes my vocation. Every day I want to get better at my calling. Yeah, after my vocation comes my friendships. Who told you you can't be saved and have fun? All right. <laughs> yeah, you need some friendships. You need to have some people who you can detox with. When I make Jesus the number one priority, he'll bless all the subsequent priorities. <gasps> have you ever considered the reason why your life is off is because it's out of order? You put the marriage before God. And now you wonder why the marriage is struggling. You put the children before the marriage and you wonder why the children are struggling. I'm telling you, your life is out of order because you don't have priorities. When you encounter Jesus, you asking him to push you. But Jesus got in the boat and said, Peter, I need you to push me. Last year, you're measuring how good of a year it was based upon how much Jesus pushed you. But I need you to start measuring success on did you push him? How in the world do you go to church and people don't know what church you go to? Y'all know I feel a way about people who are married and I don't know you married. Yeah. Lean over and tell somebody, how do I not know your status? <laughs> you let me be single, the whole world would know. Praise him. There's nothing here. Praise him. How you married and I got to guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need you to smell married. I don't need you to smell flirtatious. I need you to feel married. Yeah, I was working at my job. My coworker said, you just give dad energy. The kids just walk around you and they feel like they got another dad. That's what I want them to feel. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, come here, come here. The next level begins when you recognize it's not about you. It's not about your preferences. It's not about your desires. It's about how can I give him my boat and let him use my boat for his platform. Right. Uh, can you imagine how far Jesus would get if we pushed at the same time? Okay, okay, all y'all got, got, got new cars and all y'all are balling out of control, but do I have anybody who knows what it's like to push a car? Okay, I just lost all the bougie people except my sister in the front row. Amen. Uh, anybody ever seen a Buick? I'm talking about one of them heavy cars, and, and you like, and, and you like, well, somebody got it in the car, and then we'll pop the clutch. Do I have any pop the clutch people who know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what I'm trying to tell you is that the worst thing is when all of us are behind, but all of us ain't pushing. I'm trying to tell you what would happen to the rock church if we push Jesus at the same time. Jesus said, if I be lifted up above the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lean over and tell somebody, push Jesus this year. Push him into your marriage. Push him into your business. Push him into the marketplace. Push him on social media. Stop pushing you and let you push him. Seek ye first. Kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. What God is saying is, what you don't know is when you push me, you go further. Come here. When you push me, you go further. 
When you push me in business, how do I push him in my business? Are you saying, Pastor, I got to hold up a card at the cupcake shop that I own and say, on Tuesday we sell Jesus cupcakes and they call angel food. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm saying is if you're an entrepreneur, the Bible says in everything you do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord. Stop telling me to support black businesses until you're going to be black excellences. I'm saying be excellent in every area of your life as if Jesus was your client and watch what he does for your business. I'm saying in your marriage, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord and as a husband loves the wife like Christ loved the church, if you put Jesus first, he'll take you far. After you get your priorities straight, the second thing you got to get is now this is your year. I'm about to lose everybody to push the limits. Uh, see, I'm talking to people who, who, who are used to playing it safe. I'm, I'm talking to people who just let the days go by. I'm talking to people who just let February and March come and April come and you remain the same. I, I, I want to talk to the people who say, not this year. This is my year to push the limits. This is my year. The text says, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, here it is, go out to where it's deep. And let down your nets and catch some fish. Go out to where it's deeper. Some of y'all have been in the kiddie pool for the past 20 years. Floaties, sunscreen, goggles, and you get in two feet of water. Come out to where it's deeper. I cannot afford to surround myself with people who don't have any depth. When I leave your presence, I want to be either informed or inspired. Yeah, yeah I got to surround myself with people who do more than watch the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Atlanta, New Jersey, Antioch. Where else they at? <laughs> Lean over and tell your neighbor, Pastor, I do be watching that on Sunday night. I do. I do. I was grieving because, 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 what's the girl with the end? She lost her husband, Pastor, so I was checking, Nene lost her husband, so I was checking in on her, Pastor. But I see what you're saying, though. I do get caught up. I do. But, Pastor, let me know how much I can watch. Because, Pastor, you be watching ghosts a little bit on the low, too. So what can I, I get it, I get it. But I'm saying you can't be consumed by it. Come here. There's got to be more to life than me working a nine to five and dying. It's got to be more. It's got to be more. I need you to come out to the deep. Come out to the deep where we don't just discuss problems, but we create solutions. Come out to the deep where we don't gossip about people, but we create ideas. Come out to the deep where we don't act like we know it all, but we live a life filled with curiosity. Push somebody and say, come out to the deep. Push the limits. Have you ever realized that some limits you've adopted? And other limits you created. You know, there's literally some limits that are affecting the way you engage people. Ooh, they mean. I don't speak to. They act funny. One that wants friends must first show themselves friendly. Yeah. So since you've been rejected, you wait for people to speak to you, and you don't know they're dealing with the same rejection, and they're waiting for you to speak to them. So now none of us are speaking to each other, not realizing that we could both be medicine for someone else's sickness if we walked in maturity. Push somebody and say, push the limits. Push the limits. Yeah, look, look, Pastor, I get it. I get it. You and your little fitness. I see you. Whatever. But me, I can't work out because when I work out, I sweat and I just got my hair done. So what you're saying is you'd rather be fly in a casket than to be healthy with a little bit of poof. I'm not going to get no help. That's too real today. Pastor, I, I get it. I get it. You study because that's what you call to do. I don't like to study, so I have to create time to study intentionally. Well, Pastor, I don't like to read. Neither do I. That's the reason why for every book I buy that I read, I buy a book that I can listen to. So when I'm not reading it, I can make no excuse and I can listen to it in the car. How do you watch and listen to The Breakfast Club every morning on YouTube, but you don't listen to an audio book? If you would turn your car into your classroom, this could be the best year of your life. What they learned in the school, you could learn it in your civic. I ain't going to get no help today. Somebody shout, push the limits. You create these limits. Look, Pastor, all men are dogs. All of them? 
I don't mess with women. Women messy. So, who, so what you got left then? <laughs> Listen, Pastor, I'm quiet. I'm a I'm a I'm an introvert. So 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 for me, I, I just like to keep to myself. I need you to be a situational introvert. Because there's some opportunities that are coming your way this year that are going to require you to step outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, stop talking about it's my time, it's my season, and the Lord's at the door, and you sitting on the couch. Stop talking about it's my reaping season, and you sitting at the couch waiting on the harvest to come knock you down. The devil is a liar. You got to get up, get out, and get something if you expect it to be the best year of your life. Somebody shout, push the limits. Push past where you normally stop. Serve past your emotion. Go past your comfort zone. Stop expecting radical when you're only willing to do regular. So after you get your priorities straight, after you push the limits, you got to learn how to be persistent. Yeah, yeah. Look at verse 5. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all last night. And we didn't catch nothing. I want to talk to somebody who feels like 2021, I worked hard, and I ain't got nothing to show for it. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to love my enemies, I was trying to bless people, I was trying to be kind to people, and I ain't got nothing. Yeah, like literally, I tried to put you first, God, and I ain't got nothing. I'm telling you that you have to learn how to be persistent. Look at what Peter says, but if you say so, I'll let the nets down again. We worked hard last night. Stop letting what happened or what didn't happen last night affect today. Mm, we worked hard last night. When you talk about the past, it links you to what happened. But when you talk about the future, it links you to possibility. Pride keeps you in the past. Faith takes you to the future. You're so busy discussing then, you're missing out on what can happen right now. Yeah, you can't quit every time you don't see instant results. Yeah, you can't quit every time you don't see instant results. Come here, come here. Pastor, I tithed and I'm not a millionaire. I'm not doing it no more. That was once. <laughs> Pastor, I went to the gym twice. I ain't seen nothing. You was, you was FaceTiming while you was there. <laughs> Look at your girl back out in the gym, getting it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, you got to be persistent. Stop quitting prematurely. Yeah, you quit prematurely. The cycle is getting old. This is how the cycle works. You start, you don't see results, you get frustrated, you quit, you do the opposite of what you started, and then you get depressed because now you see the results you would have got if you would have kept going. <laughs> Lean over and say, does your pastor live with me? Go ahead and ask him real quick. You start, let me give you the cycle again so you recognize it. You know what, this is my year. This is my year. Single and celibate, this is my year. Single and celibate, ain't nobody getting none of this. The devil is a liar. This year I am kept. I am watching my, the Lord is my light and my salvation. This is my year. I'm getting my money right. This is my year. Okay, you start, but then you don't see results. You said you was going to be single and celibate. It took one text that said W-Y-D. Lean over and tell your neighbor, just keep looking straight. Just keep looking straight. <laughs> just one text, one DM, one slip and slide into the DM. Got you all off. <laughs> this is my year. I'm getting my money right. One bill comes that you don't expect, and you fall back on your tithe. This is my year. You say I'm going to be friendly. One person don't speak back, and you stop speaking to everybody in the office. <laughs> so you start. You don't see instant results, you quit, and now, this year you gotta monitor, what do I run to when I'm running from? Yeah, you know what, you know what, forget it. I said I was gonna be single and celibate, ain't nobody checking for me, I'm trying to do it God's way, forget it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, have, a, I'm, I'm gonna have a season of stupid and sleep with anybody. Yeah, 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 God, I said I was gonna do it your way, I said I was gonna be nice to people, people ain't nice to me, they don't know what I've gone through, so I'm just gonna not speak to nobody, I'm cutting everybody off. Your blessing was on the other side of you quitting. You quit prematurely. You got to be persistent. Last time it didn't work because you was doing it on your own. This time it will work because God says, I'm with you this time. Uh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Oh, Y'all not feeling me. Let me make it plain. This week I went to the gym and I said, oh, oh, it's about to be on. They got an upper body class. I'm about to get it in. 
I'm talking about your boy went to the upper body class. It was a whole problem. I was looking, and I don't like seeing the old people next to me. Because they old and they fit more than I am. There's this other lady, she be speaking to me all the time. You're back. I said, Dude, you don't, don't tell you I'm back, like I'm a backslider. You know, I was doing other stuff. It's so good to see you. Well, I was running up and outside, so don't act like I wasn't exercising because you didn't see me here. So when she pushed hers up, I pushed mine up. I'm over here 40 competing with an 80-year-old. And she wins most of the time. So it was my first week. I'm in the upper body class, and your boy was like, woo, woo. Woo, I was like, oh God, am I supposed to be this lightheaded? <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going. It ain't nothing to a player. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And literally, I got the woman's name. I'm not going to say her name because she might be watching. But I was like, you ain't going to beat me this time. That's what I said in my mind. And so I got done with the class. And I took my sweaty shirt off. And I tried to drive. I text my wife, came on. <laughs> she just texts She texts back, you good? I text, not OK. Here's my stats. 380 calories burned. How many splat points did I get? Zero. I said, the devil is a liar. I didn't almost die for nothing. So that's it. That's it. And then my voices start creeping in. Man, you better go to in and out You better get yourself right. That woman was talking to you crazy. I think she looked at you sideways. You need to get something to eat. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got home and I pulled up the schedule. It said there's another class in four hours. Yeah, I said, that voice ain't going to win. I said, no, I'm about to do it two a day. Yeah, I said, I'm going back. I said, babe, I'm pulling up again. She said, you already went. I said, I didn't get what I needed. Yeah, I said, I'm going back. Yeah, the teacher came back. He said, you're back. I said, yeah. I said, I lost my pride in the first one. I got to get it back this one. <laughs> yeah, pull up my results from the second workout. Yeah, yeah, 914 calories. I went from zero to 32 in the same day. What I'm trying to tell you is that you will win if you don't quit. Your blessing is on the other side of you giving up. This is the year you gotta go faster, you gotta go further, you gotta keep going where you would normally stop. Push somebody and say, be persistent this year. You can't keep quitting every time it gets hard. Try it again, it's going to work this time. Apply again, it will work this time. Ask again, it will work work this time. Ask, seek, knock, push somebody and say, it's going to work this time. Be vulnerable again. Be kind again. Love again. It will work this time. The text says in five and six, I'm trying not to jump off this stage, and this time, their nets we're so full of fish. I'm in the wrong church on the first Sunday of the year. Somebody shout this time. Their nets were so full of fish that the nets began to tear. Tell somebody it's going to be different this time. Go back to where you failed. You'll have success this time. Go back to where you were rejected. You will be accepted this time. What didn't work then is about to work now. The nets were so full they began to break. Get ready for a net breaking. Get ready for a net breaking year. You're going to pull in so much, your net is about to break. You're going to have so much joy, your net is about to break. You're going to have so much peace, your net is about to break. Push somebody and say, get your nets ready. You're about to get some new stuff that you ain't ever got before. You need a new net to handle the harvest that's coming your way. Tell somebody, my net's about to break. Somebody shout priorities. Priority. What's after priorities? Push the limits. What's after pushing the limits? And the last thing you need are partnerships. I'm done. I'm done. Gas up the car. We out. Verse 7. A shout for help brought there. 
partners in the other boat. And soon, oh, y'all not catching it. And soon, both boats were filled with fish on the verge of sinking. Stop praying God, stop praying and asking God for big until you're willing to develop big people skills. If you're going to be effective spiritually, it means you're going to be successful relationally. If you're going to be effective and powerful spiritually, your spiritual success affects your relational success. Watch me. God blesses you from people. God blesses you to people. God blesses you with people. So how are you going to get the blessing if you don't like people? Mm, your isolation is blocking your increase. <sighs> I'm telling you, you sitting over here competing with people you're supposed to be collaborating with. Both boats were filled. You need partners in this season who you just don't have history in common with. You need partners who you got destiny in common with. You got partners, but y'all rowing in two different directions. Like, if, if the only thing that keeps us connected is history, then I can't hang with you too long. Come here, come here, come here, come here. If your vision doesn't require other people to execute it, it's too small. If your blessing doesn't require other people to help you pull it in, it means it's too small. I tried to go theological. I'm going to have to go ghetto. Snoop Dogg said it. It ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. I'm telling you, in this season, you need to ask God to give you some divine partners to pull up on you. Push your neighbor and say, pull up on me. Yeah. Pull up on me because I got enough joy for the both of us. Pull up on me because I got enough money for the both of us. Pull up on me because I got enough peace for the both of us. You on the wrong row. Get on a boat that got the right partners. Pull up on me because I'm about to walk in overflow. Pull up on me because I'm about to be the one hiring and not getting hired. Pull up on me because I'm about to walk through doors that God opened. Give your neighbor a high five and say, help me. Help me pull in all this money. Help me pull in all this joy. Help me pull in all this peace. Help me pull in all this love. My whole team is winning. I'm going from surviving to thriving. Somebody shout level up. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Here's what I want you to catch. There's a fine line. I hear you, Holy Spirit. There's a fine line between the blessing and the burden. I hear you, Holy Spirit. There are some of us, when we first started the church, see, a lot of us are good at exegeting text, but we're not good at exegeting context. Yeah, when I first started the church, there were a lot of people who were trying to get their lives right. But we're about to celebrate five years, and there are some people who are like, Pastor, I ain't there no more. Yeah, there are some people who was like, Pastor, I was struggling to get a job, now I hire people. There were some people who were like, Pastor, I was thinking about going back to school, I didn't got two degrees. Yeah, there were some people who was like, I was asking God for a marriage, and I've been married for five years. Yeah, there are some people who are like, I was asking God to help me lose weight, and now I'm more physically fit than I've ever been in my entire life. There are some people who are like, I'm not there anymore. So what, what do you do when the church grows, but the preaching don't? Say, so, Pastor, why do you study so hard, not just the Bible? Because some of y'all are going to rock with me for 20 years. So that means I got to keep growing so you can keep growing. Yeah, so, so watch this. Some of you all aren't praying for fish. Your boat is sinking because of how many fish you received. So what I'm trying to tell you, when you get successful, there's a fine line between it being a blessing and it becoming a burden. What if I told you as the God was blowing up the rock church, I had to be very careful that the blessing didn't become a burden. Yeah, you got to move different when your business goes from a small business to a medium business. So what I'm trying to get you to see is in your partnerships, Simon Peter realized what had happened. He fell to his knees before Jesus and said, please leave me. Look at the text. I'm sinful. Please leave me. I'm such a sinful man. 
for he was awestruck by the number of fish they had caught. As were the others, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Jesus replied, Simon, don't be afraid. Now on you'll be fishing for people. As soon as they landed, they left everything and followed Jesus. Can I give you, can I give you the hook? It was never about the fish. It was never about the blessing. It was always about Jesus. They got so much stuff, but the stuff didn't pull them away from Jesus. Some of you used to come to church faithfully when you was broke. But when you got stuff, the stuff became a replacement for Jesus. Peter's showing you that when God blesses you, it doesn't take you away, but it shows you how much you don't deserve. So what I'm telling you is that there's no amount of money that God could bless me with that's going to take me away from him because I say, God, I blessed you when you when you gave me unemployment checks. God, I blessed you when I was broke. God, I blessed you when I was suicidal. So there's not enough stuff that could ever. What can separate me from the love of God? Not height nor depth nor any other creature will be able to separate me. He fell down. It was always about following Jesus. God says, when I blow your mind with blessings, is it going to bring you closer to me? Or is it going to reveal the intent of your heart? That it was never about me. It was always about what I could do for you. So the blessings were ancillary. I'm telling you, you're going to have so much money that you're not going to be tripping off of it. I'm telling you, I'm, uh, God's like, there's bigger things. You don't need problems. You don't need stuff that money can solve. You need God to do some stuff that money can't solve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, don't we, why don't we handle the minor stuff? Like the check writing, why don't we do that? Why don't we save God for cancer? Why don't we save God for diabetes? Why don't we save God for mental health? I'm telling you that when God blesses you and you really love him, they left all. They just left the blessing. You missed it. God blesses you with the stuff. You keep the stuff and leave God. Because the culture tells you your life is on and popping. It's on once you get this, once you get red bottoms, once you get a house, once you get this car, once you get this job, once your, once your door says this in your office, once people get you to this level, they got all the stuff and say, cool, we'll leave the stuff. Because if as long as I stay with him, stuff ain't never going to be an issue. You're self-absorbed and you're still not satisfied. You put you as number one priority and it's not working. So this year, why don't we put him number one? Why don't we push him and not ask him to push us? Not my will. Your will be done. Why don't we stop reminding him about what we did last night? It didn't work, but it'll work this time. Me and my, me and my spouse, we ain't been getting along for six years, but y'all are going to get along this year. Because now Jesus is a part of your boat. Make him a priority, and you're going to be awestruck. That's your, that's your, that's your, I want you to expect to be awestruck all year. Somebody say, I'm in awe. Awe comes from a word that means awesome. It means I'm overwhelmed by God. God says, I'm going to bless you so much that you're going to be in awe of everything I'm going to do for you. Is there anybody who says, God, I don't want your stuff. I want you. God, I'm not tripping off of how much stuff I can get. I'm tripping off of how much you I can get. On the first Sunday of the year, we're saying we want you. He says, follow me and I'll level you up. I will make you fishers of men. David, you're going to go from pastoring sheep to pastoring people. Oh my goodness, that message just blessed me. Powerful, powerful. If it blessed you, this is the time for you to go ahead and give. 
Yes, so right now you have the opportunity to give. I can truly speak for myself that by my giving, I have been able to see the fruit of my giving. God has provided for me in so many ways and has exceeded my expectations in terms of, you know, work, bonuses, raises. I mean, God is truly in the blessing business just by me simply giving on my tithe and giving in faith and knowing that God is my source and not my resource. Amen.